So here is a mirror of sorts, it's curved, and in front of this mirror I put this rectangular sheet with something drawn on it, and when you put it in front of a mirror and look inside a mirror, you see a cat. You know, with pointy ears and uh, sided protrusions that look like whiskers and everything. So I'm very happy with this cat, I'm proud of this cat. Nice cat, I would say. But when I show this to a mathematician and theoretical physicist colleagues, some people like this because they have good taste, but others say, so? Well, that's really sad. I hope that they didn't say so. But for those of us who would like to say so, here's the thing. In front you have a mirror indeed, but that's what we call a convex mirror, so it's bulging out towards us. In the back, inside of the tube, there is a concave mirror, which is bulging away from us. So now I'm going to put another cat inside and look at what happens. And if you look from the correct angle, you see another cat inside. By the way, some people might wonder how many reflections are bouncing off before it reaches our eyes, but in fact it's just one reflection. It's reflecting on the back side and then coming out. So you have a cat on the inside. Now, a slightly odd thing is, that cat on the inside looks very much like the cat on the outside. Although the cat on the outside is from a convex mirror, whereas the cat from the inside is from a concave mirror. So convex and concave, I mean, they are opposite things, and you might expect that the distortion effects to be the opposite, but they look very, very similar. So that's quite interesting. It's not much of a hint, but one thing that has to do with this effect is the following. This arrow is pointing from left to right. And if you look at its image reflection in the mirror in front, the convex part, it's still pointing from left to right. But let's look at it on the inside, on the con cave mirror. It's pointing from right to left. So that's quite interesting. It reversed uh, the, its direction. So it's a matter of where, with respect to the focus, you are placing the arrow. As I move the arrow inside, or equivalently as I move the mirror, you see the arrow changing its shape, and somehow it sort of blurs out and eventually at the end you come to the point where you see really the image next to the, the original arrow. So you can do something like this with a cylindrical mirror and little rectangular sheets of paper. When I first thought of this, you know, I thought something like this might be interesting to try. The major problem I faced was where do you find a cylindrical mirror? I mean if you have a um, flat mirror, you know, slightly bulging out or bulging in so that it changes the size of your image and so on, well you can find that in cosmetic shops and so forth. But where do you find a cylindrical mirror, a tube-like mirror? And I thought and thought, and finally I went to the Stanford Shopping Center and I found one. These are cookie cutters. It's a cookie cutter, you know, where you make a cookie dough and then cut the chips. So you can buy one for one dollar, and with that you can make a cat in the mirror. A cat in a cookie cutter? That's right. <laughs>